Well, happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday Bible Study here at Hightown Church. We're located in Northport, Alabama. My name is Marvin Cherry, and I am the senior pastor here, uh, and I have the awesome privilege of teaching our Bible study uh, for today. Today, we'll be studying from this thought, and that is, what do you see now? Again, what do you see now? Uh, we'll be studying from the book of Mark, the eighth chapter, verses 22 through 26, and we'll be studying from the New International Version of the Bible. Uh, before we go into our study, ask, I ask that you pray with me. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Uh, we invite you into our presence. We invite you into this study. We pray that you would strengthen our hearts, that you would enlighten us, that you would give us the words to say and the words to speak. I pray now, Father, that our ears would be open, that our eyes would be open, and that our hearts would be open, that we may receive your word today uh, and to do so with gladness. Speak to us, Father. It is our great desire not just to be hearers of your word, but we want to find ourselves doing your word as well. I thank you for every person that will be studying with us today. Uh, may your blessings and your good favor fall upon them right now. I pray, dear God, that uh, uh, you would create an environment even now so that uh, uh, this lesson would be a blessing, this lesson would be encouraging, uh, and that this lesson, lesson would be strength to their faith, uh, no matter who they are, and no matter where they are. And for this we say thank you, dear God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, let me read our text from the New International Version of the Bible. Um, uh, Mark, the eighth chapter, verses 22 through 26. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. Uh, he took the blind man by the hand, that is Jesus. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? Verse 24, he looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go in to the village. Amen. And that is the reading of the word. Uh, these verses will serve as the basis of our study today. Amen. Uh, what do you see now? What do you see now? You know, du during the Lord's ministry, uh, Jesus, uh, he, he raised the dead. He healed the sick. He calmed raging storms. He cast out demons. He multiplied food. Amen. And he would always perform these mir miracles instantaneously. Amen. Uh, I mean, they just happened. They, uh, they, you know, they were, didn't happen over a period of time, but they were instant. He would do these things instantly. Uh, but this would not be the case, uh, case for th this blind man. So it wouldn't happen like that this time. In fact, the healing of this blind man uh, is the only recorded miracle that was performed by Jesus where the miracle itself took place in stages. It, it literally took place in stages. And so what I want to do today is I want us to look at some key factors uh, of this miracle that we're about to study. And also I want us to take the, uh, these factors uh, and apply them to our own, li our own lives. Uh, miracles still do happen. Uh, our God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Uh, scripture teaches us and tells us that uh, our God changes not. He, he changes not, you know, um, uh, he's not weakened with time. Uh, God is still our strong God. And what God did yesterday, what he did a hundred years ago, what he did a thousand years ago, uh, he's still able to do it today. I want to encourage you to believe in miracles. Uh, amen. Even in 2021, with so much happening and so much going on around us, I hope and pray that you'll be encouraged today uh, and believe that you still serve and you still worship a God of miracles. So let's look at just a, key, a few uh, key factors of uh, this miracle that we just read about, Mark the 8th chapter, verses 22 through 26. Uh, here's the first thing that I want to point out to you, and that is this. Sometimes God uh, will choose to operate outside of our box. 
You know, we have a habit sometimes of boxing God in. That is uh, predetermining how God ought, ought to do something or limiting uh, what God can do when God can do it and how uh, he should do it. Uh, we should understand sometimes God choose to operate outside of our little box, boxes that we choose to put him in. In other words, sometimes his method of blessing us, sometimes his method of performing miracles for us may be way outside of the norm, way outside of what we are accustomed to uh, and may be way outside of what's ordinary, uh, what we've come to know as ordinary. Uh, I truly believe this more uh, today that uh, one reason uh, that Jesus performed this miracle differently was to remind us that uh, we cannot contain him or his father inside of a box. That is, we cannot dictate to him. We can't look at what's going on around us uh, and then determine or tell God how he should do it, whatever uh, it may happen to be. Amen. Uh, look at Mark. Look back at Mark, the eighth chapter, and verse 23. It says this. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside of the village. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside of the village. Uh, when, he had put, when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? The first thing that I want us to notice or see is this. Notice how Jesus uh, chose uh, intimacy uh, over uh, a big crowd. Uh, the scripture teaches us, and we just read where the Lord took the man outside of the city. He took the man outside of the city. He, that is, he got him away from everybody, uh, took him outside of the village. Uh, now, Jesus could have healed him. In other words, the Lord didn't have to get, at a, get, in, a, go, get in a certain place or go to a certain place to perform a miracle. Uh, but he, he could have healed the man. He could have healed the man in that busy village uh, right there in the middle of the street so that everybody could see it, so that everybody could witness it. But he didn't. What he chose to do was to, to get this man alone, uh, to have a one-on-one -on -one consult, if you will, a one-on-one -on -one healing session with this man. How different that is uh, from the way that so many of us choose to do it uh, and would want to do it. I think sometimes we feel that we have to have a big audience, that we have to have a huge crowd. Sometimes we feel like that we have to have the perfect backdrop or the perfect setting, uh, a, a huge stage uh, and a powerful microphone uh, to do something meaningful or worthwhile uh, for God. But we don't. I mean, those things are nice and there, there's nothing wrong with those things. But every now and then the Lord chooses to get us off to our, uh, our all, off all by ourselves, just uh, him and us. Amen. Uh, we, we, I think sometimes we, all of us, sometimes I think that, uh, you know, we want to be seen and we want to be heard. We want to be praised and we want to be admired. Uh, we feel that we need to have the attention that the eyes have to be on us. Listen, nobody was more famous than Jesus. Nobody was God but Jesus. You know, here, here, here's Jesus walking around. Uh, uh, these people bring this blind man to him, begging him to touch him or to heal him. And so what does the Lord do? He takes the man, gets him away from around everybody uh, in an isolated, quiet place uh, so that he could speak to the man alone. But again, it's different from us. We're different. Uh, sometimes we're, what we're saying is, listen, give me the crowd. Give me the audience. Uh, look at me, celebrate me, compliment me, uh, be in awe of me. And then we say to people, lift up me, lift me up. Uh, Jesus, again, could have healed the man and given him his sight right there, right on the spot. But the Lord chose to be alone with the man uh, and to talk with the man privately. Uh, I thank God that we have the ability to be in an intimate relationship with the Lord, a close relationship with God. Uh, there are times when it's nobody but us and God, uh, me and my God, you and your God. And I thank God that he provides opportunities uh, like that for us because we need that sometimes. Sometimes we need to get away from the crowd. Sometimes we need to be taken away from uh, all of the lights and, and, and all of the, 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 the things that sparkle and all of the glitter and all of the glam and just be by ourselves with God. Uh, I believe that some of our greatest and most faith producing moments or times in life, they happen when we're completely alone with God. 
when we're completely alone with God. I believe that seeking his face and embracing his presence is something that we ought to do. It's something that we ought to welcome into our lives. That is to be alone uh, sometimes with God. And I'm not saying all the time. I'm not saying stop going to church or uh, anything like that. But I'm just saying that there are times uh, when we need to be alone with God. Uh, we need to follow the Lord in a, into a quiet place. We need to allow him to talk to us. We need to allow him to feel us. I mean, feel us with himself. And we need to, uh, to be in a quiet place alone with him so that he can love on us. Look back at Mark 8 and 23. He took the blind man by the hand and led him where? Outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? The second part of the latter part of that verse, uh, we see this. We see Jesus doing something that uh, by most accounts, Amen. Was pretty gross. <laughs> Amen. Uh, it was pretty unsanitary. Uh, and it was certainly, most certainly medically unprofessional. But Jesus spit. The, the Bible says he spit on the man. Or should I say he spit on the man's uh, eyes. He put spit on the man's eyes. Uh, now, where I come from, and especially back in the day, if you spit on somebody. Uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that's an invitation for a fight and a beat down. You know, you spit on somebody. Uh, uh, but, but that's exactly what Jesus did. Amen. Jesus spat on the man's eyes. Now, we can try and figure out, uh, you know, we can say that that's gross, that's unacceptable, I wouldn't want that to happen to me. And we can try and figure out or we can try and speculate as to why Jesus would use such an unconventional method to heal the man. But what I believe is this, Jesus used that method because that's the method that he wanted to use. And we got to remember that he, he's God and he's able to do anything. I've, I've read several th reasons why people say they believe uh, that Jesus would, would, uh, would, would spit on his hands and, and, uh, and heal the man that way. I don't know why he did it, but I know that's what he chose to do. Uh, and because he's God, because he was God and is God, he can do whatever he wants to do without any explanation to me or you or anybody else. And the church said, amen. I believe that um, the Lord's initial touch, uh, 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 it wasn't that it was insufficient to heal the man. It, it was just what? It was just part of the process. See, we can't put God in a box. We, we can't. We can try to. But no box that you or I could ever build or develop could ever hold or contain God. But we, we, we can't put God in a box and we cannot always expect God uh, to work the same way every time for everybody in every case. That's just not the case with God. Jesus asked the man, what do you see? Amen. I remember uh, there was a cell phone commercial come out uh, a few years ago uh, and, and, and their, 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 their slogan was, can you see me now? Can you see me now? Or can you hear me now? Sorry. Can you hear me now? Uh, and this guy, and of course they were promoting this cell phone and this cell phone, cell phone and the coverage that they offer. Uh, it actually wasn't a cell phone. It was a cell phone uh, provide a uh, carrier network carrier uh, and so wherever you go uh, this man will go on the other side of the mountain he'd go down by the lake he would be in a busy city can you hear me now 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 and no matter where he went the people uh, could always hear him uh, and and so what they were saying was we have the best uh, sales service the best towers uh, where we keep you connected no matter where you are well, we're not asking the qu question, can you hear me now? But the question that I am asking, the question that's being asked today, can you hear? Can, or, or rather, can you see? What can you see? Can you see him now? Can you see now? Can you see? What can you see now? What can you see now? So the Lord would ask the man, uh, what can you see? And I want you to know this. The Lord does not want us to settle. He doesn't want us to settle uh, for anything, right? Uh, so the Lord would ask the man, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what do you see? And remember this. Remember this. Uh, Jesus never asked a question for purposes of gaining information or knowledge. And we know that to be true because he's God. He already knows everything. He knows everything that can be known. So when Jesus asks a question, he's not seeking for additional information or new information or unfound information. 
but rather he's looking to impart more revelation into us. He's looking to, uh, to reveal more, to give us a deeper understanding and a deeper meaning of whatever it is that we're dealing with. Look at verse 24, Mark 8 and 24. The Bible says he looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. So the Lord would ask him, what do you see? And he says, well, what I see is people and they look like trees and they walking around town. Jesus already knew uh, what the man could see and what he could not see. The, the, even when the Lord asked the question, he knew that the man's vision uh, was not completely restored. He knew that the man was not completely healed. Uh, but he asked the question, hoping the man would what? That he would desire more. That is, that he would not just settle. And too often in life, that's what we do. We settle. We settle for the status quo. We settle for average. We settle for mediocrity. We settle for half vision. And so I think what the Lord was trying to get this man to see. Now, I, I, I know what you can and cannot see. And now you know what you can and not, cannot see. So the question is, are you satisfied with seeing the way that you now see? And hopefully the answer would have been no. And so the man says, listen, I see, I, I see people, men, but they look like trees walking around. To me, that would be quite disturbing, amen? He didn't want the man to settle for just partial sight. That is, he didn't want the man to settle for men looking like trees. Amen. He wanted the man to seek another touch because that was the whole thing. Remember, they brought the blind man to the Lord, touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him. He wanted the man to seek another touch, a touch that would give him normal vision, a touch that would give him 20-20 vision. Right now, most people. Uh, and most of the time we're just content, aren't we? We're, we're content with just a little. We're, we're content with what? Just enough. Amen. Just a little, just enough. Uh, we're content with a little blessing. We're content with a little job, a little influence. We're content or certainly can become content with a little place to live, uh, a little knowledge, a little car that uh, maybe help me make it from point A to point B. We, we can become satisfied with just a little money, a little joy. We're happy with a little bit business, a little vacation, a little peace, and sometimes just a little sense. <laughs> Amen. But God wants us to have more than just a little sense. He wants us to have plenty of sense and to have uh, plenty of good sense. Uh, and he wants us to have plenty of that which he has uh, prepared for us. Most of us are content with the one touch of salvation. Amen. Uh, knowing that, you know what, as long as I make it to heaven, the one touch of uh, uh, salvation that guarantees uh, uh, a seat in heaven. Sometimes we're just happy with that. At least I'm saved as long as I'm saved. And boy, we we need to be saved. We need to be saved by God's salvation and by God's grace. But let us not forget what comes along with the package of salvation. Oftentimes we forget all about that. We forget all about that. Most people would have answered uh, uh, Jesus's question like this. Well, uh, things are a little blur blurry, but, 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 you know, I'll be all right. Amen. Listen, the gift of salvation promises us, you and I, what? The fullness of an abundant life because of the faith that we've entrusted, we've put in Christ Jesus. So we don't settle for anything. We don't have to settle. Amen. We want the best. We expect the best because you know what God did? In giving to us Jesus, he gave us the best. Again, most people uh, would have answered Jesus' question, you know, after seeing trees, men walking around looking like trees. Most people would have answered Jesus' question like this. You know what, Father, Lord, Master, things are a little blurry, but I'll be all right, though. Things are uh, a little out of focus, but at least it's better than what it was. Uh, I can see uh, people, but the people look like oak trees. But at least I know that the oak trees are not oak trees, but they're really people. Amen. So I'm good. I'm all right with that. I'm fine. Right. <laughs> Amen. Jesus did not want this man to settle for trees walking, men looking like trees walking. Why? Because trees don't walk and men aren't trees and men are men and men don't look like trees. And so the Lord did not want the man to settle, right? 
Uh, uh, what, what do you see now? What do you see now? You know, the Lord could have left him like that, they left him in the position uh, that he was in, but the job was not complete. The mission was not complete. Amen. He would need a, another touch. He would need a second touch. And that brings me to my last point, and that is this. Uh, I always allow the Lord to finish the job, to complete the job, to finish the job. He who has begun a good work in you, let him finish it. Let him complete it. Amen. Glory to God. In other words, you may require, your situation may require a second touch or a third touch, touch or another or an additional touch, right? The truth is some nails need to be hit more than one time. Some nails need to be hit more than one time. Sometimes it takes bow, 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 five or six or seven, or eight times. Now, if you know what you're doing, and if you're a real true carpenter, it wouldn't take that many times. Uh, but if you're using a hammer and not an air gun, right, you know, most nails are going to take more than one time. And so you may need another touch. You may need an additional touch. Amen. And remember this, there's nothing wrong with the Lord, that, uh, with the Lord's first touch. Even in the case of this blind man, there was nothing wrong with the Lord's first touch. He didn't mess up the first time. He didn't run out of power the first time. We should understand this. The plan all along was for the man to be touched twice. The Lord knew that he, what he was doing. Amen. We don't always know what God's up to. We don't always fully understand it. And, 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 and I'll tell you this. We need to stop trying to analyze everything. and We need to stop trying to figure God out figure God all the way out and we need to stop trying to give an answer for every question that comes up because sometimes the truth is we just don't know but what we do know is that we put our faith and our trust in God and God is large and God is in charge and we may not understand everything that he's doing we may not understand why he does what he does but we do know this that all things are working together for our good because we are the called according to his purpose because we love him and because he loves us and the church said amen Glory to God. Sometimes we're going to need a second touch. Amen. Somet well, well, why, do I, why, why do I have to have a second touch? I don't know. Sometimes, I, I imagine, sometimes a second touch is needed or required because of our lack of faith. Sometimes a second touch uh, may be needed because uh, we're in the wrong place at the wrong time. All right. Sometimes a second touch is needed because of th there may be sin or, or disobedience in our lives at the time. I don't know. I do know this. Uh, uh, sometimes we need a second touch and sometimes we don't get we don't get it all because as soon as we get a little sometimes uh, we run we're gone oh look at what the Lord has done I, man, I, yesterday I couldn't see it all now I can see men they look like trees walking around well <laughs> You know what I mean? And so sometimes we get gone too quick sometimes we need to sit still and we need to stay silent and let and allow God to complete the work and allow him to finish it, right? Listen to this. You know who needed a second touch? Peter needed a second touch. After he denied Jesus, he needed a second touch. All of the disciples need a, needed a second touch. After they had forsaken the Lord, promised that they wouldn't do it. All of them forsaken the, uh, forsook the Lord. And they all needed what? Another touch. Thomas. You remember Tom, Thomas? Thomas needed a second touch after he doubted Jesus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. King David. Remember over in the Old, Old Testament, King David needed a touch after all, a second touch after all of his crimes. In fact, the same can be said about all of us. At times we need a second touch or another touch or an additional touch. Sometimes every one of us look back at eight, Mark eight and twenty five says this. Mark eight and twenty five says this. Uh, once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. This time his eyes were what? They were open. His sight was restored and he saw everything. How? Clearly. Amen. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. His, uh, this time his eyes were open. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. The blind man was filled with joy. 
Can you imagine that? He, 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 he filled with joy and he's filled with excitement. Why? Because he could see clearly. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I imagine he probably was quite excited after the first touch because at least after the first touch, I mean, before the first touch, there was just darkness. There was just blackness, right? After the first touch, he was at least able to see what? He was able to, 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 to see uh, men or what looked like men that looked like trees walking around. At least there was something coming into his eyes, you know, uh, but he didn't have to settle for that. Uh, there was more, right? There was more. He, he, so, so now, man, he, he's filled with joy. He's filled with excitement and enthusiasm. He's shouting and rejoicing. Why? Because now he could see. Now he could see clearly. Now he could see fully. Notice after the second touch, the Bible does not say that the man's sight was better. The Bible didn't say that. Oh, his, his, his sight is better. Uh, uh, his, his sight is, is not as skewed as it was before. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible didn't say he could see 75 or 80 percent clear. No. The, the scripture said this. The man's sight was restored and he was and he saw everything clearly. He saw everything clearly. You know what God will do? God will fix it so that we can see everything clearly. He, for the first time, he saw men clearly. That, that's clearly a, clearly a man. That is clearly a tree. That is clearly a building. That is clearly a road. That is clearly a goat. Amen. God fixes it so that we can see everything around us clearly. So we don't have to guess. And what that does is that speaks to the Lord. It, it speaks to his ability and his willingness to complete us, to not leave us the way he found us, uh, to not just leave us with one touch if it's two touches that we really need. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, the, the man's sight was restored and he was able to see everything clearly. That should be our goal in life, right? It should be our goal, uh, our, our goal, restoration, wholeness, perfection, completeness. That's what we want happening and taking place in our lives. What? Restoration, wholeness, perfection, completeness. A second touch means that we don't have to settle for partial blessings. We don't have to se settle for half healings. We don't have to settle for a portion of a miracle. Amen. And so I encourage you today to never be afraid to ask God for a second touch or another touch, because it may be a third touch or a fourth touch or a fifth touch that you may need. Don't ever be afraid to ask God for another touch. Amen. Don't ever be afraid to say this to the Lord. Lord, touch my heart again. Lord, touch my mind again. Lord, touch uh, 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 my faith again. Touch my walk again. Touch my my life again. Touch my life. Lord, I need another touch. Lord, I need another touch. Praise God. Amen. What do you see now? What do you see now? You know what? Jesus is still asking the same question today that he asked that blind man. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see now? Is your life blurry and out of focus? Do you need another touch from the master's hands? Amen. Are you willing uh, to allow the master to touch you, to bless you, to open your eyes, to strengthen you, to do whatever you need doing uh, and to do it the way that he wants to do it? Amen. Although that way may be uh, unconventional, although that way uh, may not be recognizable to you or by the world. Are you willing uh, to allow the Lord to touch you and to touch you again if need be so that you can see? Are you are you tired of uh, living off of someone else's testimony? And, you know, we, we're supposed to rejoice when, with others, especially when they're rejoicing. But every now and then we want to be able to rejoice at something good that's happening in our lives, something that's, something that, that, that's happening good for us and to us. All right. Uh, today, even right now, as we bring our study to a close, you can begin to see clearly right now today you you can begin to see clearly who our lord and savior who the savior is who the master is who the messiah is who the savior is you can see clearly who he is and what he wants to do for you and what he can do for you 
Open your eyes. He's right there. Open your eyes. He's right there. What do you see? What do you see now uh, is the question that was asked today. God bless you and may God keep you. And I pray that you'll keep your eyes wide open so that Jesus Christ will always be in view. He's yours for the asking. And if he needs to touch you, let him touch you. And if he needs to touch you again, allow him to touch you again. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for sharing with us. And I hope and pray that, and I well, I know that God will keep smiling on you. And remember that through Christ Jesus who gives you your strength, you can do all things, including seeing everything that God is trying to show you. God bless you for now, and we'll see you next time.